Hey, what's up, fellas? How you doing? Man, it's here. Hey, what's going on, guys? How we doing? Man, it's Nelly here. So I get questions so often about college recruiting, but especially at this time of year. And one question I get asked a lot is, how hard do I have to throw to get committed to either college or Division One college or um, maybe a big, big time like ACC, SEC, you know, Power Five conference? How hard do I have to throw? And so we're going to go into that today. I'm going to go through, we're on our Antonelli Baseball website, and I want to just go through our guys, our college commitments over the last, you know, five years or so. And I'm going to take you back to when they were either sophomores or juniors and give you an idea of what they were throwing. So you'll see where they ended up going. And we can just talk a little bit about it. There's no special number. Um, we're going to talk, you know, a lot about 85, but as much as I talk about 85 and above or 85 and below, I've seen guys throw less than that, go to places that maybe typically require a little bit faster. And I've seen guys that can throw really hard, but maybe they don't possess the off speed or command. And so it go, they go a little bit lower. So velocity is important. It isn't always everything, um, but I am going to talk today specifically about velocity for you guys. Okay. Um, second thing. Just let me know how my microphone sounds. So I've been having a few issues with it. And um, I don't know, it just hasn't sounded great when I listen back to it. Let me know if it sounds any different to you. I don't know if it's time for maybe a new mic. Um, but let me know. Okay, so let's scroll down here. So here's one of my favorite pictures. We'll start with this first. This is the first year of Antonelli Baseball. So this was the summer of 2014. Um, I was still coaching college. i just been released the summer before. And uh, our first, uh, this is our first kind of time dealing with college coaches. And it was uh, Tim Corbin of Vanderbilt. So we had a pitcher. Um, I, and I got to give BC a shout out there too. But I think everybody realizes Corbin in this picture. So, um, so we were playing uh, our first year. And our first year, we had three teams. <laughs> Only three teams. But one of the teams had, uh, had Jackson Gillis on it right here. And so uh, Jackson ended up going to Vanderbilt. And it was during that summer that, uh, you know, Jackson was a big lefty. We'll start with him. Let's talk a little bit about him. And, uh, you know, we had a lot of college coaches kind of find out who the, you know, what the program was. Um, and Jackson really helped with that because he was a, a big, strong left-handed pitcher that um, at the time was, was just finishing up his sophomore year. And so... Um, Anyone, anyone that I talk about, you know, when we're talking about sophomores or juniors, what I'm going to talk about, because everything's in the summer. So if I say somebody is a sophomore, that means that the sophomore season of, of high school, so their sophomore year just ended, and the summer, it's that summer. So it's in between, you know, sophomore and junior year, okay? So if I call someone a sophomore, that means it's the summer after their sophomore baseball season before they become a junior, Okay. Um, okay, so Jackson was a sophomore, and um, he threw really hard. He was a big lefty, six, probably 6'2", 220 pounds probably. We went down to, uh, to Georgia, and, uh, and he was probably he was probably sitting high 80s. I think he touched 91, um, and as a lefty, a big kid that can throw that hard, and you're a sophomore, like you're going to go... As long as you have an idea of what you're doing out there, and he had a pretty good breaking ball, and he still needed to work on his command a little bit, but um, so he ended up getting recruited by mostly all the Power Five schools, and ended up committing to Vanderbilt. Won a national championship there. Got drafted by the Brewers in 2019, so last year. Um, Matt Travisano. So Matt Travisano committed to Pitt. Matt had the same thing. Lots of Power Five. Um, Lots of Power 5 offers. Now, he's a two-way guy, so he pitches and he plays infield. And Pitt ended up recruiting him a little bit more as an infielder, but he was recruited a lot as a pitcher. So Matt was, was um, he just finished up his sophomore year uh, this year. And uh, so he's, he's a junior now. But as a, as a freshman is when he was getting recruited by a lot of these schools. Now, as a freshman, he was... Typically 84 to 87, somewhere in that range. 
with really good command, a really good slider. Um, now he did uh, reclassify, so he's a little bit old for his grade. Some of our guys will say he's very old for his grade. Um, so you can keep that in mind as well. But he, uh, you know, when he was getting looked at by a lot of those schools, he was 80, typically 84 to 87 as a freshman. All right, we'll scroll down. So let's talk about Brandon and, uh, and Steven here. So Brandon played for us as a junior, and he was a big kid, about 6'4", probably. Um, and he was actually a catcher a little bit, and he, was, he played a few different positions. He was kind of becoming more of a pitcher. And he was, uh, he threw hard. He was probably, you know, 85 to 88, um, maybe touching every now and then a little bit harder. And that was as a junior. He ended up going to Northeastern, and now he's now he's throwing like 90, I think coach said 94 or something like that, 95. So he throws really hard, okay? But another guy kind of in that 85 to 88 range with a great projectable body and a good breaking ball. Uh, Steven... Stephen threw very hard. So as a junior, Stephen hit 93 for us when we were playing during the summer. Now, he would typically throw, I would say, 86 to 88, um, touching 90s. Um, that would be where he kind of sat. But then he would get up into the 91, 92, and like I said, 93 range. Um, but he threw very hard. He was a good-sized kid, probably, I'd say he's probably about 6'2", right around there. Um but he was one of our harder throwers over the years. So if we keep going down, so we'll stop at Sean Sullivan. So Sean committed this past summer. Now Sean's a lefty. All these guys we've talked about have been righties except for Jackson Gillis, okay? Uh, Sean Sullivan's a lefty. Now Sean's a really interesting story because um, he, last year for us, so not this previous summer, but his sophomore year for us, he was probably 81 to 84. Okay, that was where he was at. Very good command through lots of strikes. Very good body. Probably about 6'3 lefty. Um, really dedicated himself this past winter to improving his body. Uh, getting in better shape. Getting stronger. He came back to us after quarantine and he just looked like a different player and he came out this summer and was you know the first bullpen he threw for us he was 86 to 89 um and as an 86 to 89 lefty that's 6'3 long and projectable you're gonna have a chance to go to a lot of different places so he had a lot of offers very smart kid and chose northwestern which is a you know one of the best schools in the country and um, and so again to give you an idea, junior, six three lefty, throwing high eighties consistently with very good command and a very good breaking ball and a, a, an arm action that was kind of like a like a, a low three quarters. Just kind of if you're a lefty hitter, you don't want to face this guy type of arm action, an arm slot, I should say. Um, so it's very very good. Uh, Sam, so Sam committed this this summer as a junior. Sam's a big, strong righty. Probably about, I don't know how tall Sam is, 6'1", maybe? It's about my height, I think. He thinks he's stronger than me. Right now he might be. Not back in the day, though. But Sam throws, typically Sam's going to be 85 to 87. That's kind of where he's going to sit. Um he, he hit a couple 90s this year, but I would say majority of his pitches 85 to 87. But he has one of the better breaking balls I've seen. So he throws a hard breaking ball, um, you know, almost like a maybe not a 12 6 breaking ball, but pretty close to that. Um, really high spin rate, and he throws it hard. He'll throw it close to 80 miles an hour. You know, typically he throws it like 77, 78. Um, but it Nobody touches it, all right? So it's an elite breaking ball, in my opinion. And he throws, you know, his fastball velocity is, is pretty good as well. Um, let's see. So we'll go down. So Jake so Jake played on uh, what we used to have a showcase team. This was back probably about three, four years ago. We haven't done one in a little bit. 
Um, but Jake came up to New York and pitched for us. Um, and I would say he was probably 85. I would say he sat right around 85. Good size right hander again. Uh, really smart kid. Was looking at a lot of high academic schools and ended up going to Davidson. And then Bobby Alcock. Bobby's played for us for a long time. Um, I'll give you the the story on Bobby. So Bobby's a big right-hander, probably about 6'3". Um, as a... So let's go through the years real quick. As a freshman, he was probably low 80s. As a sophomore, he was probably 83 to 85 um, touching probably 86 as a junior. So this would have been not this summer, not this past summer, but the summer before that. That's when he ended up committing. Um, he was typically 86 to 88. Uh, when we went down to Georgia, that's where he started to get really heavily recruited. Down in Georgia, when he threw, he was 88 to 91, uh, probably 88 to 90, touching a 91, 92. And, you know, with his size, that was based on velocity and size. Um, he was recruited by um, a good amount of schools. Now, his his breaking ball was, you know, it was okay. He didn't throw it really hard. I think that's one thing he'll continue to develop now down at Gardner-Webb. Um, but he had a, a very good fastball, an explosive fastball, and a really good body. And he's a very hard worker. And, um, and so he ended up coming to Gardner Webb. Again, he had a good amount of offers. I know Gardner Webb ended up getting, giving him, he, he was, he was, uh, given a very big scholarship by them. And so I think he's going to be a guy. I actually think he's going to be a guy. that's going to be a 95 guy at some point. Um, Nick Sinicola was as a junior was probably 85 to 87, touching an 88, maybe an 89, another you know, 6'1", 6'2", really long arms, really projectable body, very good command. One of our better command guys, never walked anybody, always getting ahead. Um, good breaking ball, too. So he was very good for us. And he, uh, he, he went to Maine and became one of their top pitchers, like, right away. He got a lot of playing time as a freshman. And by his sophomore year, he was one of their guys. So um, he was very good. Uh, Mo Rodriguez committed this, uh, last summer to Georgetown, and he um, he throws hard. He was probably similar to Bobby Alcock. He was on Bobby's team, and so he was probably maybe a tick below. He was probably an 86 to 88 guy, touching an 89, 90 as a junior. Uh, ended up committing to Georgetown. Mo had three pitches. Command was probably um, so. I would say he had three very good pitches. He needs to continue to work on his command a little. Now, I say that it's not like he's scattering balls all over the place. Um, but he could continue to work on that. But he was, again, good body, good athlete, strong kid, three pitches, um, got a lot of swings and misses. Guys wouldn't square the ball up very much on him. Todd Tringali committed to UMass Amherst as a junior. Um, he was He was probably, I would say, 86 to 88. Another tall, probably 6'2-ish, maybe. I don't know if he's 6'3. I'd say, let's say 6'2. Um, he could be 6'3. Tall, uh, pretty long arms, like projectable body. And uh, good breaking ball. And I'd seen him flash up into the 90s. I think I'd seen him hit a 91. But very good and very projectable pitcher. Corey played for us when he was a sophomore. As a sophomore, he was probably 83 to 85. Good breaking ball and very good command. Ended up getting hurt the following year. And so he did a year of uh, junior college and then went over to Dayton. Um, but I really, really liked him. I think, you know, if he hadn't gotten hurt that junior year, he probably would have been, you know, 83 to 85 as a sophomore. Probably as a junior, he probably would have been 85 to 87, 88 with good command. Not a big kid. Probably a little shorter. Probably, uh, I'm guessing now, but probably under six feet tall. Uh, but he was a very good pitcher. Chris Rashis was, as a junior, typically 
right around 85. Um, and the one thing the summer that Chris played with us is that his velocity would fluctuate. So sometimes he, he would typically throw hard in the first and then he would slowly start to drop off. And so that's one thing that we worked on a lot. He's one of the hardest workers probably we've ever had. Um, sometimes he would, I think, throw for about an hour and a half before the game. So we were working on him with him on a program to make sure that he wasn't tired himself out before he got out there. But I would say he was typically 83 to 85, touching an 86, 87, um, right in that range. And then we'll, let's see if who's our next pitcher play in this inning. Okay, so now we're kind of, so that was all the D1 pitchers right there. Um, and I think you kind of start to see what they, hopefully, what they're throwing like as, you know, I'm going, again, most of them are getting committed as juniors. Some are getting committed as sophomores. Typically, if you're going to go to a, a big time school, a power five school, a lot of times you'll get committed somewhere around sophomore year or junior year. Um, now, as we get, as we go down the list, I'm not going to do every player because we've got a lot of players. Like that was just the D1 players and now we're going into d2 and uh and d3 pitchers um and again there's a lot of guys that we can get through but now as you get to oh sorry let's back up for a second you know i always say the magic number is kind of 85 if you see there again and we're talking about sitting i'm not talking about like flashing an 85 every now and then all those guys pretty much were all sitting above 85 right and that's usually the number now it's tough to say some, you know, we got to talk about command. You got to talk about secondary stuff and everyone's idea of good command, you know, is different. So I know you have to see these guys throw, but when I'm saying good command, I mean, for, for guys that I said really good command, those guys aren't walking very many guys. Like they're putting the ball pretty much where they want to put it. Um, if I say got to work on command, that does not mean that they're walking everybody. That just means that you know they're walking a few more guys but maybe you know they're going to scatter a couple more balls around where they want to go you know inside with the fastball they miss outside with the fastball by a decent amount not every time but i just mean it's um you know i just want to make sure guys aren't thinking well this guy throws 87 but he's throwing balls off the backstop all over the place like that that's not the case okay um okay so now will hunter committed to St. A's. will as a junior was probably 80 two to 84 touch an 85 maybe an 86 so you can see there's just a little bit of a drop in velocity probably the next tear down um, and his breaking ball was okay threw it for strikes had to throw it a little bit harder so it wasn't like a great breaking ball but it was it was a serviceable breaking ball that's going to throw for strikes and he's gonna he pitched really well for us but he's gonna have to continue to work on that um so Robbie threw for us, this was our first year in the program, this was a long time ago, and he pitched for my dad mostly. I would say he was probably, um, I would say he was probably 84-ish, 85 maybe, probably 83 to 85 if I remember correctly. And again, it was a long time ago, and he pitched, he didn't pitch for me. I never got to have him on my team, but he did pitch for my dad, and he pitched really well for us. Um, but I would say he was probably right around there, just just right around 85, maybe a touch below at that point as a junior. Then we've got David Hunter. So David as a, now this is an interesting case because David as a junior threw, um, as a junior for us, he was probably 83, 84, touching 85. Very good command, very good breaking ball and change up, three pitches. And he, um, you know, he was getting recruited by, he was a good academic student, um, was getting recruited by some Ivy Leagues. And basically, everyone at the D1 level said that he was just a touch below what they were looking for. And so he ended up going to State A's, and he pitched a lot as a freshman. And now he's throwing hard. Now he's probably up into the high 80s. Um, but he was just under that sitting 85 mark in, in high school. And again, very good command, and no one ever touched him. I mean, his ERA was probably a 1 for us because he could throw three pitches for strikes and he could mix it up. And um, and he's a big kid. He's probably about 6'2", 220 pounds maybe. Uh, I'll do a couple more. 
Alex D'Angelo is a lefty, went to St. Joe's, or is at St. Joe's. Um, as a junior, he was probably low 80s for us. So um, low 80s lefty, not a big kid, probably 5'11", maybe. Um, threw strikes, decent breaking ball. Again, velocity was just... Um, it threw plenty hard enough for us, but he was probably around, I would say, 80, 81, you know, touching an 82, somewhere in that range. Uh, Tom Beliveau, he was, as a junior, he's a righty, he's kind of a skinny righty, probably about 6'1-ish. Um, he was probably 83. Three to eighty-five, I would say, consistently for us. Maybe eighty-two to eighty. Maybe eighty-two to eighty-four, touching eighty-five. Yeah, again, that was a long time ago. He played for us early in our program's history. But again, probably just a tier below. Um, you know, he's probably a similar to David Hunter. Maybe not the three-pitch stuff that David had, but velocity-wise, was probably similar. Um, Richie Gray. Richie pitched for us again a long time ago also, but he was a, a skinny, tall righty that was probably 80. Uh, Richie, th Richie threw well. He was probably probably the same type of thing. He was probably like that 83, 84 range, touching 85, probably David Hunter-ish. Um, much skinnier body. Not as great a command as David, but... He was a solid pitcher, and again, he threw really well. Dylan Stevens was a little bit of a different pitcher. Now, Dylan, I got to move Dylan up because Merrimack is now D1. So I try to put them in order from D1. Sam Beliveau always gives me a hard time about that. Why do you put the D1 guys first and not the other guys? Why do you put the Vanderbilt guy for first? I don't know why he's always giving me crap for that. Um, so Dylan threw hard. Uh, his command wasn't as good as some of these other guys, but he, he knew how to throw the ball hard. I mean, he was probably... 85 plus for us um that probably 84 to 87 but he would touch a little bit harder um but he was a little bit his command wasn't where his velo was and so that's what he's continued to work on now he's been for merrimack i know last year he was a, a one of their main guys out of the bullpen and he's throwing even harder now he's in the 90s um but his thing was velo and not as much command when he was younger and let's see here. And Simon was probably, we'll stop. We'll do Nate Carpenter as the last guy, okay? So Simon was probably, you know, low 80s. He was probably 81 to 83 for us. Uh, Right-hander, good-sized kid. I don't know, 6'2", maybe. Again, he pitched a while ago for us. So he graduated in 2016, which means he was playing for us in 2015. So five years ago, that was towards the beginning of our program, second year of the program. Um and again, Simon threw strikes. Didn't he just wasn't going to overpower you? He was going to be low, eight, mostly low eighties. And Nate, so Nate, um, Nate's at Babson. Nate played for me in 2016. Nate was a little was similar to David Hunter as he threw a lot of tons of strikes, and he had a very good breaking ball. One of our better command guys, and he might have a career ERA of like for us less than one. I mean, no one ever scored off him. And he's a big kid, probably about 6'2", 6'3". Um, but he just didn't throw hard enough. He was 82, 83, typically. And he was always kind of right there. He was 82, 83, touching 84. Um, he could throw forever. He threw tons of strikes. He threw a very good breaking ball that nobody could touch. He threw a good changeup. Um, and, you know, probably the perfect guy for Babson because... I think as he continues to throw harder, you know, his command and his stuff are really, really good. Um, but that should give you a, so hopefully you're getting an idea here of kind of where you've got to be. And I know that there's, there's other things that go into it. I mean, if you throw, if you throw hard, but can't throw an off speed pitch and can't throw a strike, but you throw 88, like that doesn't mean you might get a shot. Like somebody at a D one level may take a shot at you. Um, but it is, it kind of starts with velocity. Like if you're a righty and you're throwing 82, it's going to be hard for you 
to get a division one spot as a junior you know like nate carpenter is a prime example of a guy that had a great body great breaking ball great command just didn't throw hard enough right and so like he had everything he needed he just needed to throw a little bit harder uh, and nobody touched him right but again there's there's some projecting that goes into that but also you know most times when you see um a guy pitching at the division one level and i know there's a lot of different uh you know there's different tiers in division one but you're you're, you're gonna see most guys that are gonna be kind of in that high 80s range if you if you bump it up and you start looking at power five schools you're gonna see guys high 80s low 90s you're gonna see some guys that get even higher than that so Hopefully that helps you guys out. Let me know if you have any questions. I know it took a while right there, but I wanted to kind of go through and we could still go through. Sorry, all these guys down here. You know, we've got a bunch more guys that we could talk about, but, um, you know, like Spencer Brown, poor Spencer Brown, Spencer, Spencer just got drafted this past year by the angels, um, as a position player, but he pitched for us. He's a great example of a guy. One of our, one of the better pitchers that has pitched for us as far as just, Great stuff, command, no one ever touched him. Um, didn't throw super hard. You know, it was probably like 83, 84, touching 85. But man, what a pitcher. Anyways, Connor Handel. See, now, I, now I'm going to feel bad not talking about some of these guys. But um, I don't want to sit here all day for you guys. It's already a 30-minute video almost. Um, so anyways, that's what, uh, that's what we got. Let me know if you have any questions in the comment section below. Subscribe to the channel, hit the notification bell. I'll help you guys out if you got any questions again down there. Um, and we'll talk to you later.